What would you do? I want to sacrifice my daughter. I'll sacrifice who? Me. True. And I, I, I had done that many times before put my life in danger for other oh, people. Yeah. Oh, I know. But what I'm saying is that you wouldn't do that, but God gave his only son, not just a son, but his only son, the only one that he had gave him up and sacrificed his son because he loves us. And not that he just loves us as a friend, but he loves us so much, the Bible says, that we are called the bride of Christ, Steve. Remember that? Man. We are the and what bride else? of Christ. What else the guy gave you? Eternal life. Man. Okay, what else? But he gave Freedom. you something. Freedom. Right. Go ahead, he Steve. gave what? The God the Father, which is God. He got the Son, which is Jesus Christ. The Holy and Spirit. And he gave you something very, very important. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, plus he gave you what? Free will. So he To worship took... you. Go ahead. Yeah, well, like, yeah, so he gave you free will, you know. So God he... wants to love unconditionally. Right. So he gave Jesus, but then he, he took Jesus, but he gave us something in return. Jesus himself gave us the Holy Spirit. And now let me ask you a question. Could the Holy Spirit be the spirit of Jesus with us? Incarnate? Yep. Yep. So physically he's not here, but the Holy Spirit is Jesus is this, Jesus' is spirit incarnate. So he not only took Jesus, but he left with us the comforter, the Holy Spirit, who technically right. by the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Father and Jesus all in one. All right. See, it's Son. not it's not three different people. It's one person, three different identities. It's like for me. Amen. It's like for, for you, Steve. Well, for me, you can call me Drew. You can call me Andrew. You can call me Andy. Those are three different identities of names, but they all mean one specific person, Andrew. You can have the angel God, which is Jesus, come down on this earth. But he's yes. in spirit. Right. You know? And here's how... And, uh, go ahead. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. Here's how the... And I don't have a piano to display this here, but... Here's how... Here's how the Holy Spirit works. Oh, here's how the Trinity works. Let me give you an example. I'm going to play a recording of something. Hold on. And this is how the Holy Spirit works. This is how the Trinity works. Why is my phone acting funny? I'm trying to get to YouTube for a second to, dis to demonstrate this. Okay. Here's how the Holy Spirit works. Let me, let me play something for you just for a second. Listen carefully. Hey, you heard that? Yes. Let me do another sound effect here. And then I'm going to give everyone a uh, I'm going to give everyone a piano lesson while we're at it too. Here's another one. Oops, I got to turn that off for just a second so I can I don't want to get nothing recorded on here that's not of the show. No, I can't do that one. That's that's that's. Uh, but you heard the Been first one. Time. You guys heard the first one, and let's see if I can get this one to play something. Here's. Okay, let's see what's going on. I'm gonna play another. Hi, how you doing, Jeff? No, we want to play that one. Let's just play again something real quick. Excuse me. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. 
Anyways, I can't play that either because I don't want to get anything recorded on here. But... Now, that was the key of C for any musician out there who knows what... Uh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Was that a C major or C minor? Well, I'm doing this right now. Here we go. Listen carefully. That is the key of C, okay? And then, and on any set of staff musical notes, there has to be a character of three different notes that make up a chord, okay? Now, this is how I explained to people at Liberties a while back ago, Steve, about the key of C, about the actual trinity, okay? So the key of C is comprised of, of three different notes, C, E, and G, no matter where you see it at, it's always going to be C, E, and G. Now, there's there's different variations like E, G, C, and G, C, E, and there's all kinds of different ones, but all those represent... Like all those represent... So, hold, what on. Is, hold on for a second. What Steve. is the C, C, right? Yeah, hold on just for a second. All those represent the C chord, C, E, and G. Now, if I take away that C and play E and the G... Is that a chord now, or is that something different? No. It's something different. It becomes a harmonic interval, which means two notes instead of one. And if you take away the E and just play the G, then now you've only got a note. So what that means is in order for a chord to work properly to be an actual chord, you have to have all C, E, and G notes to play a chord. It's just like in the Trinity. You have the Father, right. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can't take out the Father and the Trinity still work because the Trinity will not work. If you take any of those three out of there, the Trinity will no longer work. See what I'm saying? It'll no longer right. be the like, Trinity. Uh, so you have the to have... Go ahead. CEG is Christ, Emmanuel, and God. Hey, I like that one. Christ, Emmanuel, and God. Good. But you have to have all three of those identities in one to make the chord C, to make the Trinity actually work. Because if you take, if you then, this is what Albert Einstein said finally on his deathbed. Because he was speaking about this theory of relativity. And he, and, he, and he claimed in his searches that it will never work. You can never get the theory of relativity to work, it'll always stay a theory. And what he said on his deathbed surprised, shocked me to bits. He go, he was just at his last bit of breath. And he goes, he goes, I found the answer. And he holds up his theory of relativity. He says, I found the answer. And he died saying this last words, but he says, the answer to make the theory of relativity work is God. He said, the answer to that problem is God. He says, nothing under the sun can work unless God is present. Therefore, right. you got to have God, Son, and Holy Spirit to make the Trinity work. The Trinity will not work if all three of those identities are not present. It's just like the C chord. You can't have a C chord unless the C, E, and G are all present in the chord at once. Because then if you, if you take... Go ahead. Could you go, like, let's go back to, I'm going to go, uh, if you go to heaven, back in the Old Testament, well, I guess, Grant, if you believe in God, you go to heaven? Yes. Okay. And why do you, even the Old Testament and New, why would you go to heaven? Because of what? Because of your faith. Three, ident three identities of God. Right, the three identities saying? of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Right. So what happens is you believe in God in the Old Testament, but like God said, if you deny one of them in the New, you denied them all. You, know, still, you denied them all. You deny, yeah, because you denied Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Because you can't, you can't take you deny me. Right. Then that you deny me, right? You can't take Father God out of the out of the equation of the Trinity 
Because if you take Father God out of there, you've taken them all out of there. Those three identities have to be there for it to be, to for it to work in your life. You can't just take one. Well, I I don't believe in like uh, there are some Baptists out there who don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You ever notice that? Right. Some of them do not out there. Well, you can't just take the Holy Spirit out and expect Father God and Jesus to work for you. No. It's just like Catholics don't believe in the Holy Spirit either. They do to a degree, but they don't they don't believe in the Holy Spirit like we do. They well, they believe... preach it. Go ahead. They don't what they what some of the Catholics don't believe some is that the old like the the prophets of the old died and there's nothing in not the new of the prophets. Right. But yet they, God spoke God right. spoke again, Jesus Christ spoke before he went to heaven. He should and prophesied they, in my name. Right. And they believe also that the uh, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, was just sent as a comforter back then and he's not here anymore type of deal. And don't get me wrong, I love Catholics to death, Steve. Some of my good friends are Catholic people. And there are some saved, sanctified Catholics who who are now what I would call a Pentecostal Catholic or a born-again Catholic. Some right. Catholics are born again and believe what we believe now, but still stay true to their Catholic heritage because they grew up as a Catholic. But they are born again Catholics, believe in the, the risen Lord, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and all that stuff. But you can't have any one of those three uh, people out of the equation missing because it won't work, just like the cord won't. If you take anything out of there, it will not work. Right. Give you all three to work. Right. <clears throat> you know, and then God's performing the miracle. Right. So, but like we were trying to say, Jesus has been there. He had to do what he had to do for us to be saved. He had to die on that cross because we are, like the Bible says, Steve, we are born into sin. We are wicked people from the start. The minute we like, pop... Like, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like I was going to say, because uh, I had an argument with people before. <clears throat> so you believe in God, but you don't believe in Jesus Christ. You don't believe in miracles. I said, <clears throat> I said, well, you don't learn to God because you now you got to an answer to yourself. But that's supposed to be the Holy Spirit teaching you. And, uh, you know, Jesus Jesus did that in the cross as Lord and Savior. He hasn't come back yet. And but you believe but you believe in God, but you don't believe in the, in the other gifts of God and all these other different things. Right. And you must be bear witness to it. I wonder for those people out there, are they gonna make it to heaven? I'm not no, sure. I don't think so because they don't believe in the see, in order for you to go to heaven, you gotta have no spot or blemish. Let me ask you a question. If you don't believe in all five fold gifts of the Spirit, is that a spot or a blemish on you? Uh, Let me say it to you this yes. way. Yes. I say yes in a way. I would say no in a way too, but put us not everybody's gonna, not everybody has the five gifts of Lord. No, but you gotta at least believe in them because Say you don't believe in the full five gifts. Say you don't believe in speaking in tongues except for only in your prayer closet and only by yourself. Well, what if God wants you to speak in tongues, say, say you're in your car and God wants you to speak in, or say you're at, a, say you're at the grocery store and God wants you to speak in tongues right then and there or at church. And the next thing you know, it's somebody is going to come by you and you're supposed to give them a word. But just say you don't believe in speaking in tongues on your prayer closet, and you say, well, that's not meant for right now. That's meant for my prayer closet. So I rebuke that. I cast it to my prayer closet, and then we'll be doing that in my prayer closet. So now that you didn't speak in tongues, have you missed the opportunity to speak a word that somebody needed from God? Yes. So is that a spot or a blemish then? Because you're not doing what God wanted you to do in the first place? Right. It doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven either. No. You're thinking, but but you're just disobeying rewards God. Yeah, you know, you're disobeying God is what you're doing, technically. Well, people are trained trained to believe one thing or another thing. You yeah, know? I know. Yeah, I understand. Uh, 
I, I have arguments about this 